Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host Charles and in today's episode we're going to take a quick look at the PC Duino Nano 4, a compact single board computer that is similar to other single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone Black, and Intel's Edison. So stick around. <music> A few months ago, the kind folks over at LinkSprite sent me a new PC Duino Nano 4 to check out and see if I could find a spot for it in one of my upcoming projects. I do think that I've found a good project to embed the board in, but that project is still a few weeks away, so in this video I just want to talk about the board, highlight its features, and maybe mention a few reasons why you would purchase that single board computer over one of its aforementioned competitors. As I just said, the PC Duino Nano 4 is a small form factor single board computer that features the all winner H3 quad core ARM Cortex A7 system on a chip that is clocked in at 1.2 GHz. Additionally, the all winner H3 features a Mali 400 MP2 GPU that is running at 600 MHz and supports OpenGL ES 2.0. A solid 1GB of DDR3 RAM is present, which makes the PC Duino Nano 4 a true contender in the single board computer arena. The PC Duino Nano 4 also features onboard 10100 Ethernet connectivity, HDMI video and audio output, a 3.5mm audio jack, an onboard IR receiver, a built-in microphone, dual USB host ports, and a micro USB on-the-go debugging and power jack. Additionally, a DVP camera interface is present, as well as a 4-pin serial debugging port. A 40-pin GPIO array is also present, of which 28 pins are addressable. The PC Duino Nano 4 stores its operating and file systems on a standard micro SD card, which is plugged into a slot on the bottom of the board. The PC Duino website states that the minimum card size of 1.8GB is recommended, but I highly suggest that a 16GB or higher micro SD Class 10 UHS-1 card is used for best performance. The board's actual operating system is based on Debian Jesse with some features removed from the Jesse distro to make the PC Duino Nano 4 distro more lightweight and efficient. Don't worry though, it appears that all the packages can be added back in without consequence by downloading them from the AppKit repository. The PC Duino Nano 4 measures in at just 64 by 50 millimeters, which makes it compact enough to hide in a wide array of projects. As you can see, the PCB features four mounting holes, which is nice because mounting holes are often overlooked on boards like this. I'm also a fan of the board's white solder mask layer, but I feel that the red silk screen is a little tough to read at times. Maybe a darker color like black or navy blue would have been a better choice. So what do I think of the PC Duino Nano 4? I have owned or used almost all of the single board computers that have hit the market in the last five or six years, and I have extensive experience with the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone Black specifically. The PC Duino Nano 4 is just as capable as the second generation Raspberry Pi boards with a few exceptions such as its lack of a dedicated DSi DisplayPort connection, and of course it only features two USB host ports where the Pi 2 features four. On the software side of things, both the Pi and the PC Duino operating systems are based on Debian, but the Pi has a much larger user base, which results in more custom libraries and example code that can be downloaded from the internet to help the end user along with their project. With that said, the PC Duino Nano 4's operating system seems to work with some of the libraries that have been developed for the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, but there will be times when some of those libraries must be tweaked slightly to get them working correctly with the Nano 4's system on a chip. Overall, I am pleased with the build quality of the board and how easy it was to get up and running. I did have an issue with the board's documentation, as it just lists VNC as the only way to connect to the board for the first time. I later found this not to be true and that SSH is in fact enabled by default. Instead of going through the steps to connect through VNC, I simply could have used PuTTY and SSH in as you would normally do with most other single board computers. So, my final thoughts on this board is that at $25, the PC Duino Nano 4 is a bargain for someone looking for decent performance from a single board computer that is small and compact. It's close to being on par with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the BeagleBone Black, but both of those boards have more features and community support than the Nano 4. In the end, it all boils down to what you want to use this board for. If you're looking to build your project with an LCD that requires a DSi connection or want built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, then this board might not be for you. 
But if those things don't matter and you're willing to tweak some libraries to get things working, then the PC Duino Nano 4 might be a good solution for your project. If you would like to learn more about the PC Duino Nano 4, check the description below for a link to the PC Duino website as well as a link to Amazon where you can purchase a board for yourself while at the same time helping to support the Maker's Workbench. That's where I'm going to end this overview. I have a project in mind for this board, but I still need to think it through a little bit more before I order the rest of the parts I need to actually build it. If you have any ideas about projects or tutorials that you would like to see me make with the PC Duino Nano 4, please let me know in a comment on this video. If you found this video helpful, please consider taking a moment to head over to my Patreon page and pledging a small donation to help me keep the lights on in my workshop up and running. Every donation counts and it's very much appreciated. Additionally, if you would like to see more small board computer reviews, tutorials, or projects like those that I have on this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, remember to click that little bell icon right beside the subscribe button and that'll let you get email updates when I post new content. Finally, if you're feeling generous, please click on the like button for this video as it helps me gauge what those watching my videos want see. So that's going to wrap up things for this episode. As always, remember to hack the world and make awesome. Music